Okay, so now it's a container of noodles. You see, noodles, right? If you turn upside down, it's all gonna crash and it's gonna spoil, which is not good because you know, my family member's gonna scold you. So, I'm gonna swing the container of noodles now. So you've watched Miss Ellie swing the container of noodles and you found that she's asking two questions. Number one, what causes the noodle to stick on the top bottom, top bottom, bottom of the container? So basically, if let's say this is your container, the base of the container. Lah. I'm just going to call this the base. Okay, so this is your container. And then your noodle will stick here. Ah, so what causes the noodle to stick here? Well, number one, the noodle, whenever it's touching a surface, you have to suspect contact force. Okay, so there's obviously contact force of the noodle pressing on the container. I'm just going to call this the contact force of the noodle on container. Okay, so because of this, there's also another contact force of container on noodle. And all we care about is actually just the noodles, guys. Right? So there's obviously also weight of the noodle, mg. So to help us contextualize the forces again, I'm going to draw a circular path like this. Okay, I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. Okay, and I'm going to place, I'm going to draw the container here. Lah. Okay, the noodle is obviously in circular motion as well. So I concern myself with the top of the circle. So here is my coils of noodles, all right? And the only force that I'm concerned about is the normal reaction force. So this N is the normal force of the container on noodle and mg or weight is the pull of gravity on noodle so this is mg so you may be asking yourself um this why do we care about the forces remember this thing is in circular motion so if i determine the center of circle which is here this is my c i know that the direction of net force have to be directed towards the center right this net force is directed towards the center. And because of this, uh, I can actually write an equation for this normal force. So from here, I will write, let me change the thickness a bit. I will write that my net force is equal to, because I'm going to take downward as the positive direction. So uh, this downward is positive. So this one, normal force will be positive mg will be positive because I take the direction of net force as positive to save me a bit of headache. Lah, okay, so this direction of net force is positive, meaning net force here will be equal to mg plus the normal force. All right, so if net force is mg plus the normal force, then I can actually rearrange this because net force is also equal to centripetal force. Centripetal force is provided by mg plus the normal force. Okay, so in this case, right, there are a few things to note. Let me rearrange this so that I have an expression of the normal contact force on top of the circle. So on top of the circle, my normal force is centripetal force minus mg. Okay, and the interesting thing about centripetal force is this thing can be written as mv squared over r minus mg. Okay, so there are a few things that is happened that could have happened. So for example, let's say uh, Miss Ellie rotates her hand faster and faster. What will happen to the noodles? The noodles will press stronger and stronger against the base of the container to create a larger and larger normal force. 
So that is actually consideration one. Okay, case one. If V increases. Okay, so if speed increases, you can see this V will increase, meaning the centripetal force will increase. Okay, or the net force increases. So I'm going to write if V increases, explanation point number one, the net, the necessary centripetal force needed increases. We need more force to keep it in circular motion. If the necessary centripetal force needed increases, this means the normal force, because N is equal to centripetal force minus mg. So if Fc become bigger, let's say this is a bigger and bigger number, you minus mg, mg is constant. So N also increases. This actually translates to the contact force between noodle and container increases. So this means that in order to increase the contact force, the noodle have to press harder and harder against the wall. So noodle is fragile. If you press too hard, it will break. Can you think of a kitchen appliance that does it? Spin things very fast. The things stick to the wall, like a centrifuge. <clears throat> and then what will happen is, because of that, the thing actually breaks apart. Okay, to break things up in the kitchen to cook. All right, so this is one example. So contact force between the noodle and the container increases. Ah. So if I can spin this very fast, the noodle will turn to dust. Okay, so this is what happens when speed increases. But what happens if speed decreases? So this is, uh, I'm going to draw a line here. So we're going to think about condition two. What happens if speed decreases? Of course, we're going to flip the statement. The necessary centripetal force is less. And from N is equal to Fc minus Mg. Centripetal force is less. N will also decrease. So the noodle's contact force will be less and less. The noodle will press less against the wall of the container. All right. So if there is less pressing against the walls, then the N will decrease until zero. Now what happens when the contact force is zero, you guys? What happens when this noodle no longer in contact? Correct, lah. Noodle falls. And when the noodle falls, this is what we call a limiting factor. This is the minimum speed required to keep noodle in circular part. So what would that minimum speed be? Well, if your n is equal to zero, you can just look at this equation. All right. So when n is zero, zero is equal to Fc minus mg. So I can rearrange. Fc is equal to mg. All right. And then I move some things around. This will be mv squared over r is equal to mg. I can cancel this and I will get v is equal to square root of r times g. Wow, I watched the first lecture, miss. It is so familiar, of course. Like all centripetal uh, forces, because we are studying very classic cases, the force diagram actually looks very similar. Okay, I will show you that in a short while. But I also want to point out that this normal force, this normal contact force is not the same. Okay, it is the smallest up here, but it is the largest down here. Why you may ask? Well, let me draw the container again for us. Okay, so this is my container. And also at the same time, this is directed towards the center. So this is the direction of your net force. And this will be our chosen positive direction. I'm going to add my noodles in. And 
there's obviously the weight of the noodle, mg, that is constant. But you look at this scenario, mg doesn't even help you provide centripetal force. If you compare this one, mg is actually in the same direction as the normal force to provide your centripetal force. Now mg is like, meh, I'm going to point in the opposite direction because that's what I do. I point towards the center of the earth, not the center of the circle. Fine. So that means this normal force, n, must be bigger. Okay, let's say I call this n2 lah. Alright, so this is N2, and if you want to differentiate it in your notes, you can call this N1. Okay, so this is N1, this is N1. Okay, let me add all the ones before I forget. 1, 1, 1. Okay, so N2 is much bigger than N1, because if I'm going to write the net force equation again, net force is equal to N2, minus mg means why minus mg uh? mg also never change direction well we are taking the direction towards the center of the circle as positive so that means you are a positive and negative mg you are in opposite direction you are a negative okay so you have your net force is equal to n2 minus mg and if i rearrange here n2 will be equal to okay so let me not jump steps Centripetal force is net force. So centripetal force is N2 minus mg. Sometimes like, I jump step because, you know, I'm impatient. So anyway, this N2, I can rearrange, right? I will have this as uh, centripetal force plus mg. So you can see this N2 actually needs to do double time. It needs to support the weight or balance off the weight. It also needs to provide centripetal force. So it's N2, very tired one. It has to help provide FC while balance MG. Hiya, so much work like that law, what to do. Not all normal contact force is create have the same life, you see. Anyway, this is MB square over R plus MG. So in the case of velocity increasing, this is very straightforward. The whole thing will increase. If the velocity decrease, this one will also decrease. Lah. Okay? But there's no way that it will decrease to be less than mg because something weird will happen to your noodle. So from here, the only thing that I just want to remind you is that the normal force N2, because of this plus sign, is larger than the normal force N1. Because if we circle back, this is my N1. 1, 1, 1, 1. This is minus Okay, so that should be clear enough. And what you actually need to know or to answer the question is, what causes the noodle to stick to the base of the container? My answer to that would be the normal contact force between container and noodle. Container on the noodle or and noodle can already. If, of course, if they ask for more marks, like it's a three mark explanation, I will write a bit more. Lah. I will explain that this is Newton's third law here. Oops. I will explain this is Newton's third law here. Okay. These two are an action reaction pair. N3. Right. So the noodle will press up against the base of the container. The container will press down on the noodle. Okay, and what are the forces acting on the noodle? Well, I have N1 and I have Mg. Okay, so the important point about this, uh, hopefully not too long video, is to show you, number one, that normal force can act for any object that is inside a container that is moving a in a circle. So this means if I put you inside a spaceship or a roller coaster and I rotate you this way, you will also stick against the wall. Or the centripetal force will push you into your seats. So, although please don't try this. Technically speaking, if you don't wear your seat belt, you'll be safe. Please wear your seat belt, okay? You don't know when something will malfunction and then this is too slow, okay? So, um, the forces acting on the noodle is the contact force. And there are two limiting factors or two things to consider. If my velocity increase, no problem. My normal force can be larger and larger because the noodles can press harder and harder into the base until the base break. La. Maybe the base plastic is not very secure or the noodle break low until something breaks. La. This is no problem. But if velocity decrease, 
it can only decrease to a certain value below that value right the noodle will fall and also be below that value this thing is not going to rotate at all okay so when v decreases the centripetal force will drop until your normal force drops because when you slow down you don't need that much net force ma. so then the noodle be like okay lo, since the net force you need is less i don't have to press so strongly on the base of the container if I don't have to press so strongly, what will happen? The normal force will become less and less and less until it becomes zero. And when it's zero, the noodle won't touch the base of the container. Noodle fall down. Sad life. Okay? So this is your limiting factor. N1 is zero. And hopefully you have watched this because you have watched the previous videos, okay, about tension in a string. So if we compare this to our scenario about tension in a string, Again, uh, the forces are pretty similar. Okay, so the only difference here is that we replace the normal force with tension. You know what? Let me draw them side by side for you. All right, so you see behind me, there are three different scenarios. Two of them are hopefully familiar and one of them I will record a calculation example later. Okay, you can check out the list. So the first case, case one, the, I'm going to start with the one on the left, lah, okay? So what are the forces acting on my pendulum, okay? Or the yo-yo, huh? all right? So the, obviously we have weight, okay? So I'm going to zoom in to this one, okay? Then later I'll zoom out so we can compare. I'll draw this stick so we can see. All right, so we have mg pointing downwards. And our friend mg is always the same, because it's the same yo-yo, ma. <laughs> yo-yo. And also at the same time, there is tension, right? So tension is used for pulling. So there is T here. I'm going to, just going to call this T1. Okay, so this tension is used for pulling. This is my T1. And tension is used for pulling. This is going to be a big, big T2. Because why? Huh? Nah, this T2, you got to do all the work, bro. I got to provide for a centripetal force. I got to balance my MG. That's a lot of work, okay? So anyway... If you don't know which direction to take positive and you're always confused, don't worry. Let the center of the circle guide you. Okay? So we will point the direction towards the center of the circle as positive. This is net force. Okay? And we treat this upward direction positive. This is net force. So we have done this several times in different videos. So I'm going to do this a bit quicker. Okay? In this case, your centripetal force, which is happened to be your net force, Net force is centripetal force, okay? Is equal to T1 plus mg because all the forces are directed towards the center of the circle. Whereas in this case, your centripetal force is equal to T2 minus mg. So from here, you can see T1 is equal to centripetal force minus mg. T2 here will be centripetal force plus mg. That's how we know T2 is bigger than T1, or we go and swing a yo-yo and feel the tension in our hands. Lah. That will be the more experiential way. Okay, if you're kin kinesthetic learners. Okay, noodle. We have spoken about the noodle. Miss Ellie has graciously swung around some noodles from her house. And uh, the noodle will obviously have weight. Okay, so I'm going to draw mg of noodle. Okay, obviously not really drawn to scale, but this is mg of noodle. Okay, and there's normal contact force, remember? Because the noodle, we spoke about this, the noodle will press against the wall. The wall will press back on the noodle. Why must the noodle press against the wall? Because the noodle looks at MG and says, Yo, bro, you need to provide centripetal force. Leh. You see, you see? The direction of centripetal force is towards the center of the circle. So this is the direction of your net force or your centripetal force. And then MG is like, well, uh, tough luck, I don't have enough. I am constant. Then noodle say, never mind, never mind. I'll press hard against the base so that you get a larger normal contact force. So in this top scenario, your centripetal force is working, is the working together of weight plus N1. Just like for the string, it is T1 plus weight. For the noodle, okay, la, I write them identical. For the noodle, it will be N1 plus weight. 
So I wish to point out here pretty explicitly that when it comes to circular motion, for the classic examples, the, direct, the forces may have different names, but the force diagram looks very similar. So hopefully that doesn't confuse you, okay? So of course, when the noodle is at the bottom, weight be like, okay, bro, I cannot help you anymore. I'm in the opposite direction. And two, you take over, okay? So again, we take the direction towards the center of the circle as positive. So because of this, Fc will be equal to, this is positive, because this is positive, N2, and this will be negative, minus Mg. We have done this example in this video. So let me give you a bonus one. Let's say we have a Hot Wheels car looping the loop. Ah, you know the Hot Wheels one where the car go turn like that and go out. Of course, like, let me draw the remainder of the loop. Lah. So... We will come here, make a rotation, and then go out. Okay? So, if this loop the loop thing, means what are the forces? Well, my friend, like I said, MG is always going to be there for you. Pulling you down though. Or keeping you grounded. Perspective matters. Okay? There's obviously the wheel pressing against the track. So I'm going to label in case you never play Hot Wheels or cars before. This is the track. Okay, it's a track for the car to move on. So here, your track will press down to help you provide centripetal force. I know on both wheels also have that, but I'm just going to represent it by one. This is normal force. I'm going to call this N1. So N1 here is the contact force of the track on the trolley okay 90 degree one of course you may be saying is there a contact force on the trolley on the track got okay so likewise there's also another n here so we we'll call this n2 n2 is similarly the contact force so the contact force is the strongest again at the bottom because why n2 gotta do a lot of work man in this case your centripetal force here will be equal to still N2 minus Mg. Why? We take the direction of Fc as positive. So you can do this as many times as you want until it makes sense in your brain. Take the direction of the center as your guiding direction. If this downward is positive, then you get a positive. You get a positive. So here, centripetal force will be N1 plus Mg. And down here, Direction here is positive, so you get a positive, but your opposite direction, you get a negative. So let me zoom out a bit to show you all three diagrams. And you will notice that all three diagrams of force is very similar. Yes. So whenever we move in a circular, in a vertical circle, the confusing part here is not so much that you need to resolve forces. In fact, you don't have to resolve anything. But the confusing part here is, Although my mg maintained the same direction, my mg went from positive here to negative here. Why? Uh? Well, that is because we take the direction of the center of the circle as positive. And depending on where your bucket is, the direction towards the center is different. Why? Because we call this centripetal force. I write big, big for you. Centripetal. Centripetal here means directed to the center. So acceleration, directed toward the center. Net force, directed toward the center. So we only care about the center direction as positive so that we can adjust the forces quicker. quicker. You want to go against the grain and call this one negative force, okay, but you'll get the same equation. Okay, so the takeaway here is Learn to write the forces, learn when to use positive, when to use negative, and the tension or normal contact force is the greatest below here. Okay, so let me try to highlight everything. Here, here, and here, all of this will have the largest contact force or largest tension. So, largest magnitude of T or normal force. Okay? And the highest part here 
So I'm talking about here and here and here. All this blue color highest top position has the smallest T or N. And the smallest acceptable value, smallest allowed was what again? If you're thinking N equal to zero or T equal to zero, then you are correct. Because when N is equal to zero, the noodle will no longer press on the surface. The trolley or the car will go up. Aya, too slow. Fall back down again. You play Hot Wheels before, you know what I'm talking about. Vroom, 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 vroom. Aya, no, too slow. Fall back down. Okay. Tension, same thing with your yo-yo. If you don't swing your yo-yo fast enough, it will go up here and then suddenly the string will become slack or loosen. Yo-yo fall down. Okay, so these are all the first diagram for vertical circle. Easy part is you don't have to resolve. Difficult part is the number one, the magnitude of tension and normal force will change. There's a minimum value point on top, maximum value point below. And number three, because the direction of the circle, center of the circle keeps changing. So the direction, positive, negative sign can be a bit confusing. So always use center directed as positive. Okay, that's why whenever I see circular motion, my advice to students is determine where the center is. Just like whenever you are lost, you determine where the center of your heart is and hopefully it's in a good place. All right, that's it. I'll see you in the calculation examples. Bye-bye.